Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, I'm just gonna go over a brief update of what we saw this past week and just what we think we're gonna see in the coming weeks in terms of the trend. If you are working on becoming a consistently profitable trader, you're gonna wanna subscribe. Hit the thumbs up if you appreciate the video. And without further ado, let's dive into the charts. So what we see is uh, ES, which is uh, S&P 500. And I did a midweek recap update because we did get the bearish confirmation pushing down. As we sold off, we swept the lows. That was my highest probability trade, took that trade. Then I warned saying, you know, you don't wanna jump in short even if you are having that short bias like I now do have. You don't wanna jump in short because we swept all the liquidity recently to the left. So we're due for a retracement to stop out shorts before we continue lower. So with my, my personal bias is uh, I'm still leaning bearish and I think there is a possibility we hold the recent highs. I think we could also still push up to the eventual target of 4070 that I had in mind initially. Um, basically, we're just looking at the fibs. So after we had this sell off, we broke market structure to the downside. So there was a higher probability of us pushing lower to create new lows to the left on S&P 500. But we came up and we just kind of traded up into the resistance to the left. We got rejected around the 618, which was around 4040. And we swept the recent lows. And then on Friday, big push up to the upside, but it only really still pushed to uh, resistance to the left. So on futures, we made a high of 3990. And we could still just totally push up to 4000, 4010, totally expected. The question is, do we break these highs, stop out people, stop out shorts and go over 4040 and then continue lower? Or is this simply a higher low in a recent trend since October and we're just working on pushing our way back up to uh, 4200? 4, we don't know that, but like I said, I am now leaning bearish. So I'll show you, the, I'll show you uh, two trades I took this week. If we did tend to push up, we could easily just decide to push up, stop people out, go to the 70% retracement, and then continue down. And then in February February to March, really push down and uh, at least take out the uh, 3,800 level. Question is, do we take out the uh, 3,500 level in uh, February or March? This is what I'm leaning towards, but again, I'm not gonna trade this. We're just gonna watch and see what happens. This is not financial advice. Thursday, I still had the bear buy, so we were trading down, trending down, and then uh, on the open, we pushed up and we stopped stopped shorts out simply. It was just a liquidity grab. After I saw this candle on the 30-minute uh, chart, we basically just made a, made a high. I'll pull it up on my other chart after. We made a high and there's a big liquidity wick to the upside. So once I saw this candle close, I got in and I just set my stop to uh, the previous high and TP being new low. Because like I said, I had the bear bias. I was leaning towards us continuing lower. So since I had that bear bias, um, after we created a high, we made a resistance. I just set my stop above that resistance after the 30 minute candle close got in on the entry, and then set the take profit at a, at a new low. Um, we hit that. This actually ended up being the bottom, uh, believe it or not, uh, before we pushed up. So took this trade on Thursday. It was plus 17 points on ES. And then on Friday, Friday morning, I wish I actually held this in hindsight, but um, woke up and uh, around 7 a.m. I saw we were trending up on the 15-minute chart. And I just put out the video saying that, you know, we swept all lows. It's a, unlikely for us to push lower. I saw NASDAQ was a lot stronger than uh, S&P 500, like a lot, lot stronger when recently it's always been weaker. So those two things combined, usually when the NASDAQ is stronger than S&P 500, uh, it tends to mean there's more risk on. So there's a higher probability of us pushing up because if lately when we've been pushing up um, or having any rebounds, the S&P 500 and the Dow were leading and the NASDAQ would just be like still red when the other two were green. And in this case, it was drastically the opposite. Like NASDAQ would be up like half a percent while S&P was flat. So, you know, huge appetite for risk because the dollar was super weak. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, compounding factors, the reason why I took this trade, but I should have held longer. Honestly, I, I, I got too stuck in my bias, which, which is fair, which is fair. So. All I was looking at was I'm going to take this long to resistance to the left because I had faith we would at least fill the range to the left before making a new low. But we actually ended up trending up all day. So it was a one to one. Uh, we just like, took 20 points on the NASDAQ here. I uh, got in at 11,404 and then took profit at 11,424. I had a stop at uh, 11,384. Just um, going with the trend as we were coming up and we had the confirmation of the green candle closes. 
So we just took the 20 points there. And that was my only trade for Friday because we just kept pushing up. So at that point, I felt I was it was too late for an entry long and risky to go short just because we had so much power pushing to the upside. If we got a daily candle close above the 4100 level on ES, then that's when I would really scrap my bear bias and then would have to have a bull bias. But for now, I would be keeping my bear bias because we did break structure and we didn't break the highs to the left. We could wick above and come down. We could still go to 70% uh, fib retrace. But again, if we got past the 78.6 and closed there, then I wouldn't have faith in uh, seeing the new lows be swept. Obviously, it could be a fake breakout, but you just have to go with your bias as the market forms in front of you. On the weekly chart, obviously, we can continue to see the trend making lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. We came down, pushed up. A lot of people think this is now a higher low at the uh, you know 3,800 level. And then we pushed up. And this is on the weekly. Got rejected, but pushed up. So now next week, we could push up a little more. And again, if we close a week or a day above 4,100 on ES, that's when we may continue higher. For now, though, um, I'm going to start going in. I'm, I'm actually going to start adding some shorts in my swing account at uh, 4,000. So, you know, if we push up, let's say Monday, Monday, if we push up to about 4,000, then I'll start building a short position. <clears throat> and then in my swing account, just a small position. If we close uh, at 4,100, then I would just cut the position right there. Make sure you guys could do some studying if you're working on becoming a consistently profitable trader. I highly suggest you actually uh, use a tool called FX Replay. FX Replay is basically paper trading. It's like on TradingView where you can press the replay and you can set trades, but it's 10 times better. So, you know, like on, when you're on TradingView, if you press replay and you go back, let's say you want to trade your time and your time that you usually trade is Friday at 9 to 11 a.m., you would choose 9 a.m., you know, you're on the 15 minute chart here and then you can press play and you would say, hmm, you know, we're consolidating, but I think we're gonna take out this high to the left. So you could draw a long position and you say, I'm gonna enter on this candle. And I think we will uh, break this high. My stop will be the low of this current candle. And then, you know, press play and the, the candles will start forming in front of you. Oh, look, the first candle right there. Boom, hit TP. <laughs> I was lucky. But the problem with this is the candle just forms right away. Whereas when you're on FX replay, this is where you can go ahead and let candles form in real time. Here's an example of FX replay. You know, you can test out whatever strategy you want. And what I would end up doing is setting, uh, let's say I'm on the 15 minute chart. I can click up here, go to one minute and go real slow if I want to, but I'll press play and you'll see the 15 minute candle forming. See? In real time and you can do this on any time frame so it's insanely beneficial so I highly suggest you if you're looking to be a consistently profitable profitable trader you're gonna to want to sign up for that and you can actually use my buddy Mac uh, his name is Mac gray search him up on YouTube he has a discount code for that so you can use that and then get a good discount so I highly suggest you go use that if you're looking to become a profitable trader because you can just practice all the time on the weekends and that's what I do use the weekends to study practice and just build up the repetition so that way you're able to be more confident in your trades. Hold the winners and cut the losers quick. That's going to conclude the video. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Subscribe for more just like this, and I'll see you in the next one.